Are you looking for some last minute Christmas present ideas and you're a bit strapped for cash? Don't worry, I've got you covered. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over how to make a few different things. We've got small stars here, trees, bigger stars, and wreaths. The reason that I'm making this video is because I might be like yourself in that I left things a little bit late and I needed some extra kind of stocking fillers and just some things, some extra gifts that I wanted to make for family and friends. I did want to make them out of natural materials because I'm quite interested and passionate about making things out of natural materials and also things that have been foraged and sourced locally to myself. In a lot of the videos that I've done, you may have seen some of the random weave sculpture or basket videos that I've made in the past. I do get into where I get the foraged materials from, but today, with time of the essence, I know it's late, you need to get things done before Christmas, so I'm not gonna get into that. Where's your Christmas spirit? I will say, try and source things as ethically and responsibly as possible. If you want to see where I get some of this material in more detail, please watch these videos here. For today though, I'm just gonna get straight down into how to make each thing. So, first of all, trees. So you can make these out of different thicknesses depending on whether you want something that's going to be either stuck in a plant pot or used as a decoration that's hung on the wall or if you're going to use something that's a bit smaller and use it as a decoration hung on your tree. But overall the method of making them is the same. Obviously you can use different materials to make them but in this example I'm going to use willow. So first of all get two pieces of willow slightly thicker than the rest of what you're going to be working with and bend that over. Then grab your weavers and then you're going over and under both of the structures on the left and the right. So you'll see here, I'm going over the entire structure around the outside, over the first of the middle structure, then underneath the on the right hand side of the middle structure and then on the far right hand side. And then you do that a few times until things hold in place. And then you'll be at a stage where you can go in between all four, over the far right, under the next one, over the one after that, and then under the far left, which you wrap around and then alternate between the weave. If you need to put new ones in, remember butt to butt or tip to tip, and I would normally put them in around the same place where you finished off the last one. Once you've reached your desired length for the tree, then you can start by bringing it in and not going all the way to the far edge. You're now just weaving in, inside the middle section. I found that this is great if you can end on a thinner piece at this part because you're asking quite a bit more of the weave and then it's easier to tuck it in at the end. Once you've reached the base of your tree, tuck it in however you want and then get one of the pieces that are sticking out using your thumb or a knife, kink it and then work out roughly how much you need to stick in back into the tree and then just snip that off, kink it a second time and then you can push it back in holding everything in place. Then moving back up to the tree itself, using your thumb, you've kinked it, fold it back over, same as before, kink it again so that it will then fit in the tree itself. You can make them out of lots of different materials. I personally have tried wild willow, basket weaving willow. I've also tried soft rush, but just remember that your weaver has to be obviously quite pliable and not so strong that it will change the structure of what you've used to weave around. Okay, for the next section, we're gonna get onto stars, but I'm gonna take on these stars here, but I've got a special guest to come in. We've been doing some filming on another video, some wet felting and needle felting videos, link here. If you're interested in that, go watch that video. But the artist who did that with me, Peggy Beer, is gonna take over and show me a much easier way of doing the stars than I tried when I first did it, of making stars like these. So, I'm gonna quickly cut to Peggy, and then she's gonna take over doing those little stars. So Jason's invited me today to show you how to make a really simple, easy star. I use them as wands as well. You take a piece of whatever you got, material, stick, willow, anything, and just section it into five different sections. Make the kinks and then let it all go again. 
Now I always explain the next step, like I'm making a kind of a four, and then I'm taking the tip end and feeding it through the corner. So it goes over one and behind the next one. Now I am under the next willow bit, so I need to go above the next one and under again. And doing this over under motion basically really helps just to keep them in shape basically so they don't fall apart. So I can just let go of the pieces now and they will just stay in place. And then if I do make a wand for children, I would tie the bottom end, just make a little knot. You can use willow like any other material, just as if you used a piece of string, just tie a knot to it. And that is the finished wand or star. If you don't want the long end, you could bend this last piece again and just weave it in and out of the star. Okay, next we have stars like this one. Like with all of these projects, using varying materials that are near you. Just get out there, play with materials, see what works for you and what you have excess of. In my case, it was soft rush and willow. First of all, get yourself six sticks and cut them all to the same length. Then make yourself a V. When with that V shape, just weave it together however you want out of your weaving material. And then from there, same as with the trees, it's just a case of going over, under, over, under, over, under again. Don't go too far at this stage, but just so that it stays in place. Do that with the other four sticks. So you've now got three Vs. At this stage, if you have twine or pegs, this is quite handy just to hold things in place while you start to tie the rest of it together. But then it's just a case of weaving in and out, in and out, all the way to the bottom. Once you get to the bottom, I then wrapped what would be a corner piece round and round to hold it in place. Again, like this one, this was the first one that I made and I messed it up with the rest of them. <laughs> if you're clever and you leave enough on one of the sticks at the start, which means they're not all the same length, so you have to think about that first, you can leave enough that they can then be stuck in something or like with Peggy's example could be a nice kind of wand shape. Otherwise, cut them all off, cut it all to size, and yeah, use them however you wish. With these stars, I will put a link to the video that I watched on YouTube on how to make these. It's ever so slightly different to Peggy's example. And personally, I it, he made it look really easy in the video, but I found it really fiddly. And after Peggy showed me this way of making them, it just seems so much easier and, a way, and an easier way to explain. Last, but by no means least, the wreaths. These are probably the simplest of all of the things to do. And if you make them bigger, they can become a real centerpiece or obviously something that you would put on your door or really can become a showpiece of your celebration. First of all, get yourself at least four rods. I use between four and six for mine, but it's totally up to you this stage. You can use hazel, dogwood, all kinds of different materials for this bit. Make your wreath, which is just a simple case of making a circle and then making multiple circles weaving over the top. Once you've got your wreath, now it's a case of decorating it. To do this, again, super simple. I use like Douglas fir, I've got rose hips, different types of cypress. You can use so many different things for this, but I basically got two different textures that would then be the back and then some berries of a different color for the front. And then, real simple, make a bundle, wrap it onto your wreath, make the second bundle, wrap that on, make your third bundle, wrap that one. Again, you could use all kinds of different things or you could use twine itself to just cover it up and that wrapping that is holding everything in place also becomes part of the look of your wreath. And there we are, wreath complete. Right, I hope you found that nice and easy. I wanna say thank you again to Peggy Beer. So that's Peggy Beer from Connecting With Nature CIC. I will leave the link below to Peggy's, but also if you're interested in learning how to wet felt or needle felt, the video will be here. Otherwise, I've also done some other weaving projects with forage materials. If you like these ones, you might like another wreath project that I made completely out of forage materials. That was a bigger wreath and almost Halloween themed more than Christmas themed. And I will leave a link to that at the end. But for today, happy holidays. Hopefully all your family will love all the different gifts that you give them. I hope my family and friends enjoy them because <laughs> they're getting giving them whether they like it or not. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.